Okay, before we move on to the next example, I'd like us to try and remember a word from last unit. It's a word for perpendicular. And we had this um, last unit saying if two vectors are perpendicular, they're called this. Does anyone remember what that is? Two vectors are perpendicular, they are called this. Matt? Oh, I'm sorry, Matt, that's incorrect. Anyone else? Two vectors are called this if they are perpendicular. Helen? No, 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 that's not quite right. No, no, sorry. It begins with an O. Ruben? Orthogonal, that's right. Good, good, thanks. So we say that if two perpendicular or two vectors are perpendicular, we're said to that they are orthogonal. And then there was some property about that that I asked you to remember. If two vectors are orthogonal, then we know something special about their dot product. Can anyone else remember what it is? The dot product is equal to something if they're orthogonal. So if the vectors are orthogonal or perpendicular, what's their dot product? Anyone? Sheldon? That's right. They are equal to zero. Very good. So remember, if u is orthogonal to v, then u dot v is equal to zero. And the reason of that is, remember, if they're orthogonal, the angle between them is 90 degrees. And so when we take the cos of 90 degrees, you get 90, or you get zero. So it doesn't matter what u and v are. It could be 6 and 12. When you do the dot product, magnitude of u times magnitude of v cos theta, if the cos 90 is zero, then that whole thing ends up being zero. So we can use this fact to answer some pretty interesting questions. So here we have an example, example two, where we have two vectors, u and v, and I know they are orthogonal. And because they're orthogonal, I know that, some, that they're perpendicular. So u is 3, 1, 5, and v is 6, negative 3, and something. I've called a. I'd like us to try and figure out what that a is. Well, since they are orthogonal, we know that if we took their dot product, it would equal zero. So there's their dot product. Now we just learned the dot product is multiply the x's, y's, and z's, and then add them up. So let's do that multiplication. 3 times 6 is 18, plus 1 times negative 3 is negative 3, and then the z part is 5 times a, which is equal to 5a. And we know whatever their answer is, it should equal 0. And now this ends up with just a simple math statement. 5a equals, well, 18 minus 3 is 15. Bring it over to the negative other side is minus 15. Divide both sides by 5. And a equals negative 3. So really, this isn't, doesn't have much practical applications other than the fact that it's a good way to practice using the dot product. We remember that. It also reminds us that important thing, that when the dot product is equal to zero, they're orthogonal, or if they're orthogonal, their dot product is equal to zero.